the audio of somebody calling in in the program where the person revealed that Mazin, how Mazin Namikano was abducted in Kenya airport. The person went further to say that he created a scene and because of the scene he created, that was the reason he was not killed and he didn't end there. He became an expert in intelligence. He became a Fulani spokesperson. He went further to expose how Fulani has surrounded Nigeria. He was so expertized into telling you that Fulani have about 16 million all over Africa. This person did not stop there. He went further to tell you, let me tell you, you cannot defeat Fulani in Nigeria. This person was so intelligent. He gathered so much intelligence to the extent that he went further to tell you that uh, you can't win war in Nigeria. So that has prompted me this evening to come this very late, even when I'm not prepared to broadcast this night. So because of the situation we are into, it has become imperative that since our enemies are not sleeping, we will also not be sleeping. Remember, I told you that what we are going to do now, we are going to double the effort. We are going to double the effort we are putting in this media war. We are going to fight this media war and we'll be ready to trash anything, any propaganda, any mind game they are bringing aboard. So this evening I've come to address you. This is going to be a very short video, but I want this video to go as far as that video, that same audio is going. I want you to share this video to counter and make sure that our people minds are calm make sure that we continue to be on top of this game it is quite disturbing that people can call into a program trying to control the mind of our people we know that fulanese are scattered all over africa we know that because the agitation for disintegration of nigeria which will disintegrate the interests and the fulanization of nigeria is also a threat to all fulanese who can speak like kenyans is a threat to all Fulanese who can even speak Igbo residing in Enugu State Biafra. Is a threat to Fulanese who live in Cameroon and they are speaking French. Is a threat to Fulanese who live in uh, who come from uh, Mauritania. Is a threat to Fulanese from Central Africa Republic. Is a threat to Fulanese who live in Tanzania and they speak Swahili. So when we see some of them to come to pretend and bring Kenya into, into uh, accent to speak as if a Kenya is talking or a Kenya was talking telling you as if he was working in the National Intelligence Agency of Kenya, telling you as if he was one of the FBI agents to have known how Fulani surrounded Nigeria. And he was telling you as if he was there. He was there when Mazin Nandikano was abducted. I have come this evening to address that particular, that particular video and audio that, that people are sharing and it is going viral. We have come to address it. We have come to make our people to calm down. We have come to tell you to disregard whatever information that you hear from that audio, the fallacies, whatever that makes you happy, you hear from that audio, you can take it. But every other, every other thing, you have to disregard it. Disregard the information that Fulani have surrounded you in Nigeria. Disregard the information that you, you cannot win war in Nigeria. Disregard the information that, uh, that will put fear on you because that person that made that call or that person that called on that program is the agent, agent, agent of Fulani. And these are the people we have to be dealing with from now on. We know that some of them will be coming up. We know that they will be coming. They will be pumping from all programs now being run by their friends. We know that they will be coming from all and calling on the issue that brought us on the abduction and the kidnap of Mazin Amdekano. We know that some of these people will be coming up and they want to control your mind. You must not allow that to happen. A lot of people are already panicking. Oh, they want to, we have to do something. Oh, we have to do this, we have to do that. We have to do this, we have to do that. Uh, that uh, our Amazonian began. Yes, there is every reason to believe that they had, maybe they wanted to kill our leader. There is every reason to believe they wanted to assassinate him. There is every reason to believe that God have intervened and they didn't do that. There is every reason to believe that even as he is now, they are still looking for a way to do something bad to him. There is every reason to believe all these things. But what we cannot believe is for somebody and tell us that Fulani have surrendered us and we cannot win the war. What we cannot believe is for somebody to tell us that Fulani has 16 million people and they are going to reside in Nigeria. What we cannot believe and accept for somebody to come on social media to come and sell out propaganda to psychologically control your mind. 
What we cannot allow to try to strive is when we see the agent of Fulani, Fulanization of Nigeria, irrespective of the accent the person speaks, irrespective of the country the person is calling from, irrespective of the location, irrespective of how concerned the person is, we are not going to accept anybody coming to tell us we will not defray the Fulanese. So this evening, I've come to address that particular video. And I will make this video, like I said, as very short as possible. I want to play the audio for some of you to listen to this man who audio have gone viral and people are sharing it. There is a big fight happening in Nigeria. It is not about Nnamdi Kano and uh, any other person. It is Nnamdi Kano against the NAC. Okay. First time, um, if you can recall, there was a time uh, some people came, came about and said they are placing a bounty on Mazin Nnamdi Kano. It is Mazin Nnamdi Kano against the North. We agree. We agree. It's uh, Mazin Nnamdi Kano against the North. It is Biafra against the North. It is the Southern Nigeria against the North. It is Sunday Igbo against the North. All we agree. We agree on this. And of course, you need to have a soft landing for you to actually push the message you wanted to push to the mind of people. You first of all presented yourself that uh, you know what is going on. Yes, you are aware of what is going on because that makes you full of me. Yes, you may be aware the ulterior motive. Yes, you may, be, you may be aware of the plan, but what you cannot tell us is to come to say, Fulani have surrounded and we cannot win the war. It makes you the agent of Fulani. And however you see it, that you speak in Kenya accent does not make does not mean that you are not a Fulani. We know some of the, some of you, even in Biafra land, some Fulani speak Igbo. You can never even know that they are, you, you can't know that they are not Fulani. When they speak Igbo here, you will be shocked. So, my people, I want you to listen to audio that people are sharing, trying to create fear on our people. We must not allow, we must not allow this kind of propaganda. We must not allow this kind of people to strive. When we control the social media, we must not allow them to continue to strive, to continue to control the mind of our people. Yes. That bounty was a meeting held on the back before those people came to uh, Broadcast that meeting, they went to they went to a parkier meeting and uh, they concluded that they are going to act as if they are placing a bounty. Before they came to announce that they have already made a plan. If Nandi Kano was not already in their possession, they have already made a plan to capture him, or he was already in their possession. Who doesn't know that before you come out to public to make a pron a pronouncement about uh, uh, you know, uh, a bounty on somebody. You must have had meeting. You cannot just call a press conference without having discussed it. You cannot just, as an organization, as a group, come out publicly to give a pronouncement that you are placing a bounty on of some of, of, of a particular uh, amount on somebody without having discussed it. So we will know. You do not need to tell us that before the meeting, before the the press conference, they have had a meeting. You also do not need to tell us that before they come to make the bounty uh, pronouncement that they are already planning how to abduct our leader. So with all the things that are unfolding, you do not need to tell us all this. You do not need to tell us all this. What you need to tell us is that, yes, he was abducted in Kenya. Don't go into details and start telling us how Fulani is in Nigeria, what Fulani is doing in Nigeria. It is none of your business. What Fulani is doing in Nigeria as a Kenya, you don't need to tell us. We are from Nigeria. And we are now in Biafra. And we are living in Nigeria as Biafra people. So you cannot. We are full and me have taken over in Nigeria. You cannot tell us. But duty can tell you, not you telling us. And you cannot tell us that we cannot win war because you, don't, you do not know how prepared you are. And the reason why you are saying it is because you are a full and me. So you think you know how prepared you are. You don't know how prepared we are. So why would you come out to start all this? And I know some of them, a lot of them will be, they cannot come to my program. Because they, if they dare to come to my program, they know how I'm going to respond to them. They cannot come to my program. They cannot. But you'll be seeing them now. They are targeting, they will be targeting, because let me tell you now, the Biafra struggle is in a different stage. Very, very interesting stage. So you'll be seeing them going from one platform to another. Propaganda. They want to control the mind of our people. They want to put fear in you. They want to let you understand that you are already a conquered people. They want to tell you that you can't do anything anymore. They want to tell you that you are already dead. I just living dead. 
They want to tell you, break everything to make you begin to fear for your life. And we cannot allow that to happen. We've already won this war. What you see Nigeria doing now is a sign of a dying horse. And let me tell you, let me tell you, you don't know what is coming. You don't know what is coming. We are going to show Nigeria. In fact, by the time we finish with Nigeria, by the time we finish with Nigeria, Nigeria will ever regret. The Fulani will regret not allowing Ochuku to go. By the time we finish with this Nigeria, Nigeria will regret not allowing Biafra of Ochuku to go. Because, let me tell you, every single thing you subjected Biafra to, from 1970 to this day, we are going to revenge. Every single thing you subjected Biafra people to, every genocide, every ethnic cleansing, every mass murder, every crime against humanity, you committed against Biafra people from 1970. That's, in fact, from 1967 to 1970, from 1970 to this day, we will never forget revenge. So do not think that we are just fighting for just Biafra and we are going to shout. We are going to show you here. You can't go free. Absolutely not. You can't go free legally. You can't go free otherwise. We are going to turn every stone. We are going to do everything humanly and inhumanly possible. You can never go free. As, you, as we are paying the price of the struggle for freedom of our people that our fathers fought, we are paying the price today. We, the new generation, that didn't fight the war, the Afra war. We did not fight the Afra war. But we are paying the price of that move to freedom, for freedom of the, of the Afra people. You marginalize us, you humiliate us, you kill us, you subject us to all manner of degrading treatment, you regard us as a class people in Nigeria. We are not going to forgive your own children. We are not going to forgive the people that did not do that to our fathers. We, did, we are not going to forgive this your generation that have come to continue from where your forefathers stopped. We are going to revenge. We will revenge on you. We will revenge on your children. We will revenge on your future generation. The thing you subjected Biafra to, we can never forget. We will never ever forget. We will revenge. Even, even if after Biafra come, you will, you will see what we are going to do to you. We will never forget the impunity you committed against Biafra people until we know that during the genocide of Biafra war, we know that the ICC were not there. We know that ICC cannot go back to begin to try Biafra war crime. But we will find a way, and not only finding a way, we know already a way how to deal with you. We will revenge the death of that 5 million people. We can never rest until we revenge. Now, I want you to listen to this audio. The plan was to eliminate him in Kenya, but when they captured him at the airport, he created a scene. The police were, were not shouting, terrorists, terrorists, and people started running away. He created, that, he created that scene, that scene he created was his savior. If not, they were supposed to kill him in Kenya. Then they took him to an undisclosed location where they kept him for some days. They kept him there to see the reaction of the friends. But their reactions was not heard of. They never did anything. Now, this is where this is where I come in. You said they arrested him at the airport and he created sin. He created sin. Let me agree with you. Let me agree with you. Let's assume that you, you were there at the airport where they shot terrorists and then everybody was running and he created sin. So people knew that they took him in the airport. Let's agree with you. Now, my question is, this person went further to tell you how they took him to an undisclosed place. Yes, the council to Mazinam, you cannot have said it, that they took him to an undisclosed location. He said it. So we are not going to doubt that they took him to an undisclosed location. Now, where I have problems, this man said they waited for Biafra people to react. And they did not react. So, if the Biafra people did not react, what do you think they would have done? They would have killed him. Right? 
Let us go by this analysis. They would have killed him, right? That is what he's trying to make you understand. That because the Afra people did not react, they have to kill him. So, but of course, they did not kill him again. Because, okay, they now remember that he created a scene. He created a scene at the airport. So the police say, for the fact he created a scene, so let them not, let, you know, they are not going to kill him again. Because people already know that they, uh, he arrested him from the airport. And I am asking you today, I am telling you today, have you seen anybody who have come anywhere to call to say, I was at the airport when they arrested or abducted Mazinam Dikano and he created sin. At least, if they are afraid to say it, they would have come just, just, just like uh, uh, off camera. Just like off camera, like this man is saying. So maybe he was part of them. Maybe he was part of them. Maybe he, you know, he was part of the Fulanese who are planning to take over Nigeria and he is from Kenya. Maybe he is one of those Fulani in Kenya. Because he went further to tell you how Fulani, 16 million Fulani want to settle in Nigeria. I don't have problem with this narrative. Where I have problem is where he started saying Biafra did not react. Because they waited for us to react. So that if we did not react, they would kill him. But then, again, he said, he paused again and said, oh, but they did not kill him because he created sin at the airport. Who knew who they took at the airport? Who knew who they took at the airport? Was the police shouting, oh, it's Mazinam the Kanu, the terrorist. We are taking him. We are taking him. Mazinam the Kanu, the terrorist. We are, taking, we are taking him. Did the police shout like that? Or was Mazinam the Kanu shouting, oh, I am Mazinam the Kanu, the terrorist. Oh, you are taking me. For people in Kenya to have known that, oh, they have taken Mazinam the Kanu. And because, and nobody in that airport have any connection to anybody, to any Igbo person or any Nigeria person, when they were shouting, he's a terrorist from Nigeria, we are taking him. Because that is the only way. You are going to say he created sin. And because of that sin, he created people identified him. And because of people identified him to say, oh, that is the man. That is the man who is fighting for Biafra. And then for that reason, they decided not to do anything to him. If you say that, <laughs> I will agree with you. I will agree with you. But then let me tell you one thing. I want you to listen to the audio. And somebody told them that if they kill Unambi in Kenya, that he has already created awareness at the airport. So it has been known that he was caught at Kenya. By then they contacted the Nigerian uh, counterparts to mm -hmm. come and take him up. Nigerians were reluctant because that was not the initial agreement. Mm -hmm. When they came and they brought him back to Nigeria, yes. you can recall that uh, Mabami came to make a speech. Yes. First of all, he spoke in Hausa language. Why did he speak in Hausa language? Because he is addressed the 75 Mountain Conseil Forum. That were the people, they already planned to, to, to make a broadcast as if they are placing a band to make it look like they are powerful. Who doesn't know that? And today they also came to thank Malami and uh, Buhari. Yes. The reactions of the officers are very porous. They are not doing anything. Oh, God bless you. I am telling you that, I am telling you that they have over overwhelmed you. Do you hear that? <laughs> because Onya Amaro Mumado Nakoya small boy. You see, yeah, that but this is the message he wants to pass. And when he was he, for those of you who listen and watch the video, when he began to hit the nail where he was coming from, because all this narrative he gave is a narrative we already know. Is a uh, uh, the lead council have already given to the public. So but that is not the reason why he called. He have now started giving the narrative, psychological narrative he come with. They have overwhelmed you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They have overrun you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Biafras are not doing enough. Oh, thank you. That is it. I agree. Biafras are not doing enough. Because they expected us. They expected us. Immediately we hear Mazin Namdikano was abducted. They expected Nigeria to go on flame. <laughs> we don't do like that. <laughs> We don't do like that. We don't misfire. We don't miscalculate. Wait. 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 I have oil on film. They expected us. They expected. Now they are going to know that all this propaganda of burning police station and all that we organized by the Nigeria government. Now people will begin to understand that burning of police station, killing policemen, we are orchestrated by the Nigeria government. Because the expected IPOB, the expected Biafras, 
Immediately we hear Mazin Ramikan was kidnapped. The entire Nigeria will go on flame. Biafra will go on flame. You know, and people will say, ah, if they if they are POB, they are accused of burning police station. If they are the one burning police station, ah, now they have arrested Mazin Ramikan. What are they going to do? Nigeria is going to burn. Everything is going to go down. They waited. It didn't happen. <laughs> they waited. It didn't happen. Or non government didn't come. Are, are you following? Supposedly, a non government did not come. But as I'm making this broadcast now, making this exposition, but we have already exposed the intelligence report we got. We know that as I'm making this broadcast now, within a few days, you will begin to see activities of DSS. DSS. You will begin to see Nigeria flame because I am exposing them now. I want you to understand. After this night broadcast, within a few days from now, you will see DSS, Nigeria DSS, they will put Nigeria on flame and they will begin to blame IPOB. I'm telling you the fact. It happened in Enugu. We captured one. He spread bullets on families in Enugu and wanted to accuse or no, yeah, they accuse him. Whether they say or no, government, they captured him. Today, his name, the answer is no. Do you know the state where he come from? The answer is no. In fact, the name is in public domain. They say they, you know, they posted his name. But do you know his? Have you seen his face? Do you know what that man looked like? He may even be be in Enugu, you know, doing his police work because he don't know who he is, except those who live in the same compound with him. You don't see his. You don't see his picture anywhere in social media. But he committed what we call mass murder, terrorism, terrorism. And there are the people who have been burning cars, burning police station, killing fellow policemen because the policemen you kill will not rise up to come and give testimony that it was him that killed me and want to paint it IPOB so I am making this let it let it be a record that after this night they are going to begin to they want to vindicate us they will say okay let us start it now DSS will begin to burn government offices they will begin to kill police and soldiers go and mark it now and I'm telling you you will come back to this broadcast and mark it so my my people I don't have any problem with that. But I have problem with the mind and psychological game being played here. And I'm asking our people this evening to disregard the information anybody is going to give you. Whatever we need to know about the abduction of Mazen Amrikanu, we have them in our pack. Nobody is going to tell that story better than us. Nobody else. We are going to tell the story when the story, when it, when it is time to tell the story. We're going to tell the story we know right from the source, right from Wonye Ndu, from Mazen Amrikanu himself. We are going to tell those stories. Not the story of somebody coming, jumping from how Mazen Amikano was arrested or abducted or was kidnapped to now Nigeria. How they have overwhelmed us. Who told you? Are you one of us? Who told you that the Fulani have overwhelmed us? And they, you know, it worked with the person who was receiving the call. The person already was nodding his head. Yes, I agree. The Afrans didn't act. A lot of you have fought for that particular propaganda. First of all, he sold the narrative he wanted to hear. After selling that narrative, what business does he have to start telling you that they have overwhelmed us? In what capacity? In what capacity is the caller telling you that they have overwhelmed us? In what capacity? As who? As a Nigerian? As a Kenyan? As a Fulani? As somebody who is in the system? Or as somebody who is with, you know, who is with us? As what? His business, in fact, he has no business with what he was talking about because he knows, he may think he know. So I want to, I want to, let, let us play it, let us play it to the end. The military is powerless. And today they also came to tempt Malami and uh, Buhari. Yes. The reactions of the officers are very porous. They are not doing anything. Oh, God bless you. you that, God bless you. I I'm hear. telling you that I go, go. they have over overwhelmed you. Mm -hmm. The military is powerless. Uh -huh. All the arms of government, they are powerless. Uh -huh. Trust me. If you start a war in Nigeria, you are going to lose. Did you hear that? If you start a war in Nigeria, you are going to lose. <laughs> Hi. I somebody sent this thing to me. You were so worried. Oh, Simon, can you look at this? Look at what this person look at oh, this video. They want to kill you. They want to do this. Uh, Simon, can you do something? Can Oh my God. And I believe 
Those who have shared this video, you will watch this broadcast this evening so that your brain will be resetted. We reset your brain. The person is telling you that the military in Nigeria is powerless. The person is telling you that the police is powerless. Already reshaping your setting your mind to project you as somebody who has been conquered by Fulani. And he is a Fulani speaking Kenya. The person who told you that the military is powerless, we know. Did we not know? Are we not aware? Military in Nigeria is powerless. They are controlled by Boko Haram. We know. And then he went, he went further to say, if you fight war in Nigeria, you will lose. <laughs> who is he talking to? How did he know we are going to lose war? Against who? Against Fulani? I want you people to understand. It is not every food you see, you eat. There are food that are very poisonous. It is not every information you receive on social media concerning Biafra and Mazin Americano you are going to consume. It is not every information you collect. It is not every information you assimilate into your brain. It is not every information you take. There are information that will come when you look at it, disregard it. Don't share it. Don't give it a voice. Do not share it to people. Don't make it go viral. Disregard it. By the time nobody talk about it, it will die a natural death. By the time you did not share it, it will die natural death. Let us listen to him. You are going to lose. There is no two way. No two ways about it. They are powerless. Trust me. If you start a war in Nigeria, you are going to lose. Akuko. You are going to lose. Mm -hmm. There is no two way. No two ways about it. These people call the Fulani. They are in 20, 20 African countries. Did you hear that? He is even telling the person to trust him. Now, I want you to see how this person projected Fulani. I want you to see how he marketed Fulani. He's one of, he's one of them. We know them. We know the way we hear that. You see how he marketed Fulani. He said, trust me, there is no way you can win this war. These people are almost in 20 countries of Africa. Are you listening? He is projecting them. And this, our brother, who was listening to him, his mind was already going so many things. Have IPUB failed? Has Biafra failed? Because the way he nodded his head, when the man said the Biafra people did not do anything, he was like, yes, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. The Afras didn't do anything. You see, this time is completely, we are going to be doing completely differently. <laughs> it is not a, you know, <laughs> I have come to make sure that all this, and I am advising every one of you that have shared this video, that particular voice to go and delete it. In fact, if you have shared it on your wall, go and delete it. If you have shared it to your brother, go and delete it. If you have shared it to your friend, tell them as you are deleting it, tell them that you share this video or the audio, you want them to delete it. We must stop the video and the audio from circulating especially to our people. The job you have to do now is that all of you that have shared the video, I want you to go back to where you share it. Delete it. By the time I want you to make everywhere you know anybody that you see on his or her wall that have shared this thing, that this voice, the work, the about 3,500 people watching me now, 3,500 people, go to every group, every page, you see that voice. Tell the person that operating the page that you have just been, you know, a, 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 somebody just educated you now on this video. Let them put it down. We don't need it. There is nothing new in the information. Is it that uh, uh, they, they arrested, they, they, they have Dr. Mazin and Ricardo that we don't know? We have had it. There is nothing new in that. The story of Kenya, we don't need it. We are not going to buy yam or buy bread with, with the Kenya story. We know where we are going to use that story. So those of you who have shared this voice, any place you share it, go and delete it this evening. Go delete it. And tell your friends who have shared it to delete it. We need to stop it from circulation. Now, I want you to, I want us to continue. About 16 million of them are unsettled. In Nigeria, you are going to lose. You are going to lose. There is no two ways, no two ways about it. These people call the Fulani, they are in 20, 20 African countries. Mm -hmm. About 16 million of them are unsettled. Mm -hmm. Now, Nigeria is going to be their homeland. Did you hear that? It will be very difficult. Is, did you hear very, that? Very difficult. And now, listen to what is. He is already giving you order. He is already giving you order. 
He's already giving you order. He said, you are going to lose. And they have 16 million Fulanese that are not settled. And they are going to settle in Nigeria. He's already telling you. Already concluding that they are going to settle in Nigeria. And somebody is listening to him. Somebody allowed this man to even now, let us let me even assume that he didn't know the game that that Fulani man played on that program. But now, for those of you who know Murphy, tell Murphy to pull that video down. Because Fulani have used his program. Fulani have used his platform to market their agenda and promote their propaganda and the psychological game. Tell Murphy to pull it down from the source. How can you sit down listening to nonsense like this? You allow the person to continue and finish the talk and then the video is being shared in the internet. And of course, do you know why? Do you know how the person, do you know how the person used to get the, uh, the market? If he has come to tell, uh, to tell you about Fulani, you will not listen to him. <laughs> if he has come to tell you Fulani is in Nigeria, the 60 million Fulani, they are going to occupy Nigeria. In fact, they will take Nigeria, you will lose war. You can never listen to that story. I know. Is it not the story we have been hearing every time? If this man have come and called to Murphy program and tell Murphy, Fulani is go there are 16 million Fulani who are going to settle in Nigeria and they are going to lose the war. You will not even listen to him. But do you know how you listen? Do you know how he take to get you? He first of all want to draw your attention by telling you that. Uh, do you know how the, the you know? Let me show you he, by telling you that information. How Mazin Namdekano was abducted in Kenya airport reviewed. Information how Mazin Namdekano was abducted in airport Kenya airport. By the time you go to the information to listen to the information, how Mazin Namdekano was abducted in uh, in Kenya airport. You are not going to listen to that. The thing you are going to be listening to now is that there are 50, there are 16 million uh, Fulanis who are going to settle in Nigeria, and that you are not going to win them in war, and that uh, the, you, they have already defeated you. Is that the how they arrested Mazin and Bikani at the airport? Is that how they kidnapped him at the airport? Is that how they abducted him at the airport? Because that is what the message is telling you. Huh? Is that how they abducted Mazin and Bikani at the airport? The message is come and listen, you know. Come on, come and listen how Mazin Namdekano was abducted in a Kenya airport. Somebody has come to review it. To come and listen. You go there to listen, and what you are hearing is something that will make you not to see that they have surrounded you. There are 16 million Fulani that they are, you, are, you can never defend them in war in Nigeria. Playing the mind game. Bring the video down so that it will not go far. So that other people who may not watch this program now will not watch it. Will not watch it. Will not watch it. This is a propaganda that we must fight, and we are going to fight this together. We are going to fight this together. It's going to happen to Mazen Two things are going to happen to him. Uh -huh. He might. Two things are going to happen to Mazen Namdekan. <laughs> are you listening? Two things are going to happen to Mazen Namdekan. He is the one now telling you two things that is going to happen to Mazen Namdekan. We have some network issue. I think we are back now. If the video is frozen, please. If the video, if the video is frozen, just refresh. Just refresh your. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if the video is frozen, just refresh your page so that uh, <laughs> so that uh, If the video is frozen, just uh, make sure you refresh your your page so you can listen again because I think we have some network issue. All right, we're back. We're back. So I have listened to, I have, I have seen a comment where somebody is saying you talk too much. I don't know who is talking too much, but anyway, just disregard anybody who comes here to distract you. Now, let us listen again. Never come out of the tension. His case might never be heard. When he comes, they will say, we are joined to this today. It will keep happening until their agendas are completed. And they say, 
Mazenam Ricardo case may never be tried. They will keep uh, coming and say, if they do it, it is not a new thing. That has been modus operandi of Nigeria. That has been modus operandi of Nigeria. So if they do it to Mazenam Ricardo, that, oh, they will say, they will bring today and bring tomorrow. Is it new thing? Has it Mazenam Ricardo been in prison without trial? He has been in the prison from 2015 for two years. For two good years. So is this the first time? Is this new? If they want to say they are bringing him tomorrow, bringing him next tomorrow, is it a new thing? So what is he telling you? He will never come, they will never have heard his case. Is there, has the case heard any time anywhere in Nigeria? So what I'm saying is that this video must be pulled down. All the friends that have shared this video, go and pull it down. We don't need it. We don't need you to share it to our people. We need to make our people stay focused. We need to be impacting our people with positive thinking, positive news, positive information. We do not need all this kind of propaganda from Fulanese. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for this kind of propaganda. If you are part of those who have shared it, please go and pull it down. And on this note, let me also bring uh, uh, the information uh, The information I want to share now. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, this uh, protest of Free Mazin uh yesterday. I made this on, uh, on my program yesterday that is slotted to hold uh, the London Mega Rally. This London Mega Rally, I made uh, this, uh, this, uh, I made a comment on this particular uh, flyer yesterday. I said that it is of no use to, to protest on Saturday. And I also faulted the protest venue of Travaga Square for a reason that I explained very well. And I said, if you want to protest in Travaga Square, you are only protesting to, to, to those who have come for tourism. And I don't think I was wrong with that assertion because you do not have any government official in Travaga Square. Travaga Square is where you will have bed, take, you know, all these uh, uh, tourists taking pictures and all that. So after this, uh, after this uh, broadcast yesterday, uh, some of the people who are organizing this protest, probably one of them, one of them get, uh, uh, them get uh, offended and uh, is considering pulling down the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the rally because of my comment yesterday. And let me make it categorically clear. For those of you who watched the broadcast yesterday, I am making a rejoinder and responding to that comment the person made through somebody to me. And I said this. Yesterday, I made it categorically clear. I asked that brother who wanted to go to Wimbley to demonstrate today. I asked him, are you a member of IPOB? He said, no. I asked him, do you know anybody that belongs to any Igbo organization in the United Kingdom? He said, no. I asked him, do you know anybody that belongs to NSMD Igbo UK? He said, no. I said, do you know anybody that belongs to a uh, council of Igbo community in UK? That young man said, no. I asked him again, do you know anybody that belongs to Congress of Igbo leaders in the UK? He said, no. I asked him again, do you know anybody uh, from Mbako on the Igbo in UK? He said, no. I asked him again, are you sure? You are an equal person, or are you sure you're a Biafra? You do not know nobody that belongs to anybody, any, uh, belongs to any organization in, in the United Kingdom. This young man told me that he lived very far away from London. That was exactly what transpired yesterday. But so, some of the organizers, one of the organizers of this rally, has twisted the broadcast yesterday. He said, is it that only IPOB members that is allowed to organize rally for Mazin Namdekan? Because I said, that is, my comment suggests that it is only IPOB that will organize Rally for Mazin Amdikan. And yesterday I advertised this. I, I said, do not waste your time in Travaga Square. Go to BBC, write a letter. When you go to BBC, you read the letter and you drop your letter with them. Ask them, why have you not been reporting the issue of Nigeria? Are you aware that the British citizen was kidnapped in Kenya by Nigeria government? Question the British BBC. I asked them also to go to the 10 Downing Street. Tell them in the Downing Street that what is going on in Nigeria, write a letter addressed to the Prime Minister of, of United Kingdom. When you go there, make sure somebody come out to address you people. Hand over the letter to the person. I say, go to the House of Commons. After when you go there, stand in front of the House of Commons, whether they have not allowed you to go there, demand for somebody to come out. You can nominate two or, three or one person to go closer and hand over the, the, the written note or letter to anybody there who will come to speak to you. I said also, Go to even Queen, uh, uh, Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, Beckham, whatever palace, if it is accessible. You go there and let somebody from the palace come to address you if it is possible. This was my advice yesterday. 
somebody went, one of the organizers, according to what I was told, went and twisted the whole thing, say, I, I, I am suggesting that it is only IPOB that is allowed to organize rally for the free of Mazinam Bikano. And he is thinking of pulling down. I also said, you cannot uh, protest on Saturdays. The people you want to talk to are government officials. They are not working on Saturday. So what is the essence of protesting on Saturday? You may consider sacrificing one day of your work if you want to help Mazinam Bikano. This was my exact word yesterday. And I, I, I still maintain it. So what I'm saying is, if you are that brother who went and twist what I said yesterday about the London Rally, my brother, you, 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 I don't, I'm not asking for apology from you, but you know you did something wrong. Because the video of yesterday is still there in the internet. You can go and watch it. It is there, available. It is there to be downloaded. It is there, you can go and replay it again. And everybody will listen to what I said yesterday and I'm telling it again today. I said, don't waste your time on Saturdays. Who is going to see you? Who are you going to address at the embassy? Who are you going to address uh, uh, at, the, at the parliament? Who is going to, to receive you at the parliament? You need to go when government officials are at work. That is exactly what I said. Now, let me make it very clear. You do not need to be an IPOB member to participate in rally. We have even called other Nigerians to join hand in making sure we have massive protests. How is somebody coming to say, my talk suggests as if the IPOB should be organizing rally? That's not true. So my brother, if you are the one watching me now and you did this thing, I am asking you that you did not do something well. Did not do, your, your action is not good. Because I didn't in any way suggest that it is only IPOB members that should organize rally for Mazinam Bikan. So if you want to organize rally, organize rally that will make impact, not just organize it to have a certificate that you organize rally when Mazinam Bikan was captured. So that by tomorrow, when we talk to you, say, is it not me that was protesting? When they captured Mazinam Bikan, we are the one who organized rally in London. We are protesting. We, did. we want you, if you want to organize protest, let your protest have impact in what is going on. That is what we ask. So anybody anywhere can organize rally. Organize rally. Bring it to me. I will share it to the public and advertise it for people to join it. But let it be that you are going to strategic places that can make impact. You cannot just come during the time where everybody is having holiday weekend. Everybody is going to be up and and to drink. And then you carry your bag and carry flag and go to Trafalgar Square. You want to protest. Who are you going to talk to? Who are you going to address? So if you want to make a protest, make a protest that will make impact. And if you think that people are working and that we, they will only come on Saturday or they will only come on weekend, believe me, the people that will come on weekend are the people that will still come during the work day. Anybody that will not come will not come. Even if you put it the time during the time they are going to sleep, they will not come. Those who want, who those who want to be part of the people that will make history, the people that will liberate people in Nigeria, the people that will liberate Biafras, the people that will liberate the Duas and every other enslaved people in Nigeria, they will always have that time to come. So do not say it is because people are working. If you if you doubt me. Do the, do the rally on Saturday and count how many people that will come there and then organize another rally during the week and count how many people that will come there. It is the people who have interest of, in which, what is going on that will still show up on that Saturday. They will still show up on that weekdays. So put your time in something that will be very fruitful. That's all I ask. And you do not need to be a member to organize rally and carry out rally and they ask IPOB members to join you in the rally for Mazin and Bikar. That's all I'm making very clear here. So on this note, I thank you all for being part of this program this evening i'm not going to go far i'm not going to you know make this program go uh, you know to run much than one, one hour five minutes or so may god bless you see you tomorrow may god bless biafra may god bless the republic may god bless middle belt may god bless uh, our wife they're going to say my prayer